Hi, I'm Rich Miller. I'm the editor of Data Center Knowledge. We're here at the Open Compute Summit in Santa Clara, and today we're hanging at the, the Intel booth. So uh, why don't you introduce yourself uh, and tell us what you do at Intel. Sure. Hi, I'm Jeff Demain. I'm with the Silicon Photonics organization. I head up the business development activities there. And for the first time here at OCP, we're showing a concept of what's called disaggregation. And one of the key features of disaggregation is a technology called silicon photonics. So let me show you a little bit about what we're doing here and talk about what silicon photonics is and why this is a compelling technology for the future. So silicon photonics, let's just start there, is an optical interconnect. So move data with light instead of electronics. And why would we want to do that? Well, because we can move them far, we can move them fast, and we can move an incredible amount of data over a single small cable. So not big bulky cables, light, flexible. Um, what's prohibited this in the past is making silicon, making optical products very inexpensively. So um, what's new with silicon photonics, which is what Intel is doing, is we're not discreetly manufacturing optical products. We're not taking a laser and putting that down and taking all of the pieces you need to build it up. It's not like snapping together Legos. What we're doing instead is we're doing it at the wafer level. So you use a CMOS manufacturing process. As you probably know, Intel has some experience with the CMOS manufacturing process. And if you want to make you know, millions of these devices, you need a CMOS-based process. We've spent over a decade perfecting that process. We're getting ready to launch the technology. And here at OCP is the first time we're actually showing this in a use model and how this is really going to define the next decade of computing. So we have in here a, an example of a rack with silicon photonics in the system. And what we can do with a silicon photonics base is break the rack apart. So, uh, and do something that's called a smart upgrade. Okay. So if you wanted, for example, to upgrade your CPU uh, today, you'd have to wait for a whole new pizza box to come out. When you went to upgrade your CPU, memory, power, all of that typically goes, right? You replace the whole unit. What we've done with disaggregation in silicon photonics is break that apart. So now uh, memory and CPU are separated from I.O. and storage. So you want to upgrade your CPU, you're just upgrading your CPU. You want to upgrade your storage, you just upgrade your storage. So it's smarter in the sense that the unit of what you have to upgrade is much smaller, more cost effective, uh, faster cycles. If it's the leading edge of CPU you want to be on, you can be on that. If it's the leading edge so of storage. So it gives you all sorts of flexibility if you've got one set of technologies that might be advancing and mm -hmm. providing savings more quickly than others. It, you can just do one bit at a time. Right. And the, the traditional ways, you'd have to wait for the slowest technology to advance before you could advance the whole infrastructure. So we uh, have it in place here and what we're showing is the first version of this, something that's being taken to market, of uh, this this uh, disaggregated or yesterday they were calling it breaking the monolith apart okay. um, uh, concept here. And you have based on silicon photonics a rack that has either Xeon or here we're showing atom-based microservers, mm -hmm. so, you know, which, whichever market, uh, whichever technology satisfies uh, the need in your data center, um, the same concept applies. Comes uh, you know, the computing interconnect uh, goes into the back of the rack. There's a switch in the back that um, gets connected optically, and then it uh, moves to the front here, and all of the elements are connected with these silicon photonics-based links. Uh, yeah, very small, very power efficient modules. And if we move over here for a second, can show you that in a single cable here, uh, one of these right here, uh, on this design, we'd have 300 gigabits per second of bandwidth going through here. Um, to do this in copper would be multiple, extremely bulky cables, it would be blocking airflow, it would be hard for your data center operators to move the cables around. So we can put incredible amounts of data through a single uh, fiber like this. Uh, so this is what finally enables this form of disaggregation, is you needed something that was very fast, you know, very thin, um, and could go long distances. So this is finally what it means, truly breaking the monolith apart. So in terms of uh, data centers and, and how they're put together, obviously faster speed allows everything that the current generation has its design to, to run faster yes. and, and better. 
and does it have design implications? You know, now that you have the, the faster connections for the way that you can, you know, put servers and data centers together over the long term. Yes, it it, it does absolutely. You can imagine taking this concept into the future even further. That now you have. Uh, a, a rack of CPUs. You have a rack of I/O. You have, you know, rack of storage. You know, you know, a rack of memory. So now you, at the rack level, you've completely broken apart the system, right? And you provision and you configure based on what you need. I need more CPUs. I'm just aggregating more racks of CPUs. So you know, we're talking out in the future, and we call that sort of phase two, phase three of this aggregation. But in the end, it's this is my, you know, this is my CPU rack. Right? And, and the silicon photonics is connecting all of this together. So you can imagine the mega data centers, that plays particularly well. But even in the small scale data center, uh, even in the small business, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean a rack is six or seven feet high, right? They could be smaller boxes, but it's what capacity do I need? Is it CPU, you know, processing power I need? Is it storage I need? Is it memory that I need? You can, you know, put together the pieces that you need. So. And you mentioned that, that Intel's been working on this for, for 10 years, yeah. which given the way Intel does things, suggests that it's been a hard problem. Yeah. What's the timeline look, uh, look like now that we've gotten it to the point where you can put it in a rack and, and show it off at OCP? Yeah, so, um, you know, it's for productization is near. Mm -hmm. uh, all I can say at this point is, you know, through the year we'll be making some announcements on, you know, technology features, uh, product availability, what the roadmap looks like, but we're clearly on a path to commercialization. You can see it here at OCP. You know, OCP wouldn't be showing this if we weren't, uh, you know, on that path. Um, Facebook wouldn't be saying, hey, this looks like a compelling technology, you know, for our data center, unless we were, you know, that close. But uh, today we're not talking about, you know, what, what is the date when this, this launches, but think near term. Okay. <laughs> Great. This is fascinating stuff. Thanks so much for, for taking a few minutes to, to help our readers understand it. Sure. Happy to do it. Thank you.